Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on hip hop's next 50 years. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We've been looking at all the highlights from hip hop's big anniversary. There were so many accomplishments and improvements in how music is made and in how we enjoy it. Now we're taking a look at some of the key trends shaping hip hop's future. Artist and entertainer Zeddy Will, who has 6.6 .6 million TikTok followers, defies some hip hop stereotypes. He came from college instead of the streets and prefers everyday clothes to designer labels. He doesn't wear jewelry or a fancy watch, but he does have hip hop's trademark bravado. The new generation of hip hop fans who grew up on social media are loving his authenticity and his growing fan base. He's an example of the popular sampling trend using familiar classics in striking new ways. My style is just old school and new school and people love it. And it's like, very, it's not profanity, it's nothing crazy, it's entertaining. I'm trying to bring fun music back and I think I'm doing a pretty good job of it. DJ Drewski is on Hot 97 Daily and has his weekly show, The New Movement, Sunday nights at 11. He's passionate about giving new artists a chance to shine and get on his featured hot list. He says the fun is back in hip hop and expects more of it in the years ahead as we see hit songs inspire viral dance trends on social media and nightclub dance floors. He says the direction is towards authenticity and away from elaborate studio productions. It's now they can put music out right from their phone, from their laptop. So it's not um, overthought, you know what I'm saying? It's not overproduced. And I think we're getting a lot of raw energy, a lot of real energy. And I think for the art and for the, the consumer, the, the fans, the listeners, they appreciate that. Chanel Ray Petaway, co-founder of the Legion Media Group, represents hip hop greats like Jim Jones, as well as emerging artists like Sha E.K. She believes in the coming years, social media will become even more important to artists' careers. She's noticing the rise of nostalgia with the newest fans who want some physical reminder of their favorite artists and believes hip-hop's global reach will only get bigger. And you're going to see more international artists. They'll be included in mainstream hip-hop more than ever. The world is more connected, and I think you'll see more international representation. Chuck Kriegmer, CEO and co-founder of AllHipHop.com. The independent Black-owned media platform, now celebrating its 25th anniversary, has chronicled the famous and aspiring to be famous in hip-hop with an insider sensibility for two and a half decades. Looking ahead, Creekmore hopes fans will keep their passion for what they like and be open to the new and unfamiliar. We embrace almost anything that comes into the culture. So for me to see the diversity and really the range of experiences, the range of walks, the colors, the hues, the textures that hip hop has to offer, what could really, really go wrong? There's a lot going on for sure. Let's find out more with our panel. Joining me is Chuck Kriegmer. He is the co-founder and CEO of allhiphop.com. Chuck, great to have you with us again. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Also with us is Hot 97's own DJ Drewski. He is an on-air personality Monday through Friday. You hear him in the afternoons. And he also has his new movement show, Sunday nights at 11. He's also a music producer. Drewski, thanks for being with us. Of course, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, so am I about this one. Yeah. Also uh, with us, joining us for the first time, Zeddy Will. He's an artist and um, entertainer. He's got a huge following on social media, and he's kind of embodying some of these new trends that we're seeing in the uh, emerging artists. We're going to find out all about that. But Chuck, I want to start with you because you've been with us through so many of these Hip Hop 50 shows as mm -hmm. we've been taking a look back. Where do you think we're at now that this kind of like big history lesson and celebration is in the rear view? I think we're in a great space. I mean, okay, maybe not a great space, but we're in a good space. <laughs> you know, I think that, I think most of the problem lies in people's inability to really look at their own inner power and what they are capable of doing. Because right now you see spaces such as, you know, the various platforms, YouTube or Instagram or Spotify and things like that. And those folks are businesses and their businesses have different ways of working, different algorithms and different things that you have to learn as an artist. Back in the day, you know, we sat in front of a TV or next to a radio and we were um, listening to what either a 
program director or someone, you know, decided was worth our ears. If you dig, you're going to find any and everything you really want to hear. So I think we're in a great space for people that truly love music. For those that are waiting for it to be spoon fed to them, it's a little bit harder. Drewski, what about for you? Because you, you have your ear to the streets, you, you're out there, you're outside all the time, and you, you're seeing a lot of the new things. It's like, where do you think we are right now? Right. Like Chuck said, I think we're in a good space. For me, I always felt like the middle child where I can, you know, communicate with the OGs and the older generations. And I'm in tune with the new generation. And I think there was always um, like a misunderstanding, right? You get a lot of the older cats saying, yo, these new artists don't know nothing about hip hop, where it started. Da, da, da. I feel like this year for a lot of the new artists, these young kids that are just starting a music career, this year, they it taught them a lot, right? There was a lot of history. When we celebrated Hip Hop 50, if you didn't know some of the hip hop history, you learned this year. So I think it was a good like bridge for like the old generation and the new generation to kind of celebrate, you know, one another this year. And it's been a big year for samples too, right? Like a lot of sampling came back. And I feel like because of the whole Hip Hop 50, that might have been a little influence on music this year. You hear some of the biggest records today have samples in it. So I just feel like it was a good like 180, you know, a good turnaround for both the old generation and the new generation. Zeddy Will, what about that? Because you're, you're one of the hottest new artists out there right now. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, back to what Drewski said, like, I feel like there's definitely a, um, a bridging of a gap between the two generations. Me, myself, you know, I'm 21 years old. I love 90s style type of music. I love that type of music. And I feel like now people are sampling songs and putting mm -hmm. into different, like the drill stuff and the Afro beats and the R and B. So I feel like there's a lot going on with that. Um, and I feel like we're heading in a good space because people want, I feel like the, the, the 50 years of hip hop is really making us understand that some, I believe is my opinion, nineties, eighties music is the best music. So us being able to connect them, um, and get to where we at right now, I feel like next 50 years would be good. Were there really certain good. things that you heard or you found or artists you found out about over the, over the, course of this last year and all these celebrations yeah like i found out a lot about uh, uh a lot of his songs that i just heard and and i'm trying i'm figuring out the artists now um a lot of producers um the biggest person i keep hearing about is rakim like i never knew who rakim was i'm like sure. who's rakim keep hearing all these songs how, how big he is and all these ceremonies and stuff i went to the bet um hip-hop awards and i seen he had this whole big thing about him I'm like who's rakim and i found out like who rakim was and all his songs so i think that's just one of the examples of just people and artists that I've been figuring out. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Drewski, what about you talking about the samples and that that's kind of, there are a lot of hit songs that are out now like that. Oh yeah, I think social media is what's carrying it, right? Because like Zeddy spoke on earlier, some of the artists that they're sampling, the younger generation don't even know, you know, whose records are those. And records that Rakim probably sampled are even older. So. I think social media is, is bringing, you know, these records back around, these samples back around. You see like J.I.D. who currently has like a big record where they sample in and, and it's going viral, you know, just all for like the the challenges they're, they're doing with these the music. So I think sampling has came a long way and, and to the new generation, the drill music. Right now, I feel like a majority of these drill records in New York City have samples on them, you know, and then even going into the... Jersey drill records where they're sampling, you know, older, older records and putting them on uh dance. It's just like insane how much sampling is going on. And it's always been happening. I was yeah. talking to Benny from Naughty by Nature and he was saying like how, you know, their records were sampled back then and kids today are using it again. And it's like, it just keeps going and going. Yeah. It's important to notice, note that they are sampling old hip hop records because Right. You no, know, these are records that are familiar to the, you know, Gen X or uh, my generation, you know, the songs that we used to listen to and party to. And now they're coming back. And I think that's really a great way to bridge the gap because, you know, it's a teachable moment. It's a moment to educate or even just maybe at the cookout or something, you know, we we bust a two step together or something. You know, I'm not doing all that crazy all that bend your knees ra uh, rap. You know what I'm <laughs> Go, Zaddy. Go, Zaddy. Right, exactly. Go, Zaddy. That's the last thing. The, the last thing I'm going to do. But it is kind of cool to see people like Busta, um, you know, working with people. You know, his whole album is pretty much a love letter to the younger generation, you know. So um, 
I would challenge even the older generation to open their ears a little bit and really tune in and listen in and really pay attention and not disregard the younger generation because that's exactly what the older generation did back in the day. Right. And yeah, it was just like, why are y'all being so hypocritical about the young people now when you know how they did us? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Zeddy, tell us about tell us about your career because you're not what people think of as the traditional rapper. Right. Yeah. So um, I think that comes with just me. Like I said before, my style of loving '90s music and me being able to mix the two, like the the, the new generation stuff and the old generation stuff. Um, and I feel like I'm, you know, the beats I rap over and, and the type of songs I make. Like I had a big song this year called Freak You. And it was a freaking you. Um, so it was it was a sample from Jodeci, freaking you. Um, and I just made it what it was, like making it new school and making it sound good to the people today. Um, and I feel like it makes me appreciate the samples and stuff, you know? Like a lot of artists now are throwing out songs and not like myself was not really knowing who made the song go. You know, it just sounded good to the people. It was sounding good to the air. So um, yeah, I think my style is just old school and new school and people love it. And it's like, it's not profanity. It's nothing crazy. It's entertaining. I'm trying to bring fun music back, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job of it. So no, and of course, and the the fans, uh, the fans definitely think that think that as well. The, the energy, the Drewski, you talked about this like bringing the fun, bringing the fun back to hip hip hop, as opposed to something that was just you know all about the violence, all about just a lot of you know just a lot of activity that could get you a, a long term bit. Right. Um, yeah, I think we're seeing a lot of records where. You know, even if the artist, the content in the song is might be a little dark, but the production of the records are like, you know, back to where you could dance to. Songs like Zeddy Wells Freak You, like that's straight party. Let's have fun. Forget about all our stress and, and just, you know, turn up. And I think we're seeing a lot of that. Um, like I said, social media, his approach to it was using his platform to kind of deliver his message and deliver his music which is not the traditional way of putting music out, right? He was making little clips, just dancing with him, his friends, with other influencers and using that to kind of get the, the music out. So they see the artists having fun. They see the artists dancing to their own music and now everybody else wants to join along. And I think that is what's, you know, helping make the music fun. Let's just talk about the hip hop style. I mean, there's like the classic international hip hop style with you guys, you know, the hat, the, you know, the baseball cap, the the hoodie or the jacket or whatever. And then a lot, and then with the artists, a lot of jewelry and just crazy over the top costumes and, and stuff like that. Do you think that's starting to change? Yeah, I think it's changing. You know, we're seeing more baggier fits now. Everybody is, you know, doing it a little different. I, I, I'm not going back to that. I'm just going to keep it, keep it real with you, but I'm not, <laughs> I, I've never been a skinny jeans wearer either, but it is it is going back to more a more flamboyant and you know fashion forward way. You know we still have our traditions and you know some of the things that we traditionally do in hip hop, but I also think that we're seeing um, really an expanded view of what we can or can't do. There's really there's really no rules. And again, back to social media. You know, if you want to get people talking, you might wear some boots that are made of plastic and red and big looking like a super anime hero or something crazy like that. You know, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that's the point. <laughs> Is there room for more individuality? Like, Zaddy, you don't rock the chains and you don't rock the all the bling and everything, right? Oh, I'm doing uh, you. What you see is what you get with me. You know, like. I feel like me, I'm more of a streetwear type of person. You know, when I'm on stage, when I'm um, at interviews, whatever the case may be, I don't really do the chains. I don't do the, the earrings and all that type of stuff, the rings. Like, I mean, everybody has their style, though. I feel like some people are going to carry that on, you know, wearing the chains and stuff. And then some people just be like me and just like being regular and just like having fun and performing. Just being regular, being comfortable, and that's it. So, Drewski, what about that? Because you, you, see, you see it all. And listen, you've been a fashion, uh, you've been a fashion cutting edge type of guy your whole career. Right. No, I've seen a mix of it, especially with artists when they come to the radio to do interviews. You get a, a good mix now. Like you get the street dudes that come in with the big chains and the big diamonds and walking around with the stacks of money exposed. And then you get artists that, you know, come in that look like they got out of bed and just came to do the interview. But they're equally stars. You know what I'm saying? So I think everyone can be their self. I think with social media, 
You're seeing even with the females, you, artists like Sexy Red, who people are like, what? You know, she don't have the big, you know, she'll wear a big jewelry chain, but she wants to connect with her fans. And it feels like, oh, she's shopping in the same places as the girls that are in school shop. Same thing with Ice Spice. I think she has a good balance of like fashion, but music always, I feel like, push fashion forward. Chuck, what about that? I think it's awesome, man. I mean, listen, we are comfortable in our skin now. I think we're very comfortable in our skin. You know, you don't have to wear even a name brand. It's like really about what you're bringing to the table as an individual and your clothes just accentuate that. And I think it's cool. I think we're elevated after 50 years to really value the the important things. What about dance? What about dancing? Zeddy, that's important to you? Yeah, that's that's dancing right now is like it's it's crazy because it's like we mix in it goes back again. Like we mix in old school dances with new school dances. You know, now, you know, we getting sturdy to New York songs. Um we got hip shaking. That's a big thing right now, you know, the Philly movement. Um when we got the jersey, uh jersey bouncing. I guess it's a a bunch of stuff going on. I feel like dancing right now is 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 a big trend to make music blow too. I feel like now, like if your song can make somebody dance, but like a specific type of dance. Like I just freestyled over a cha-cha slide beat um, on on our radar freestyle and people are already making dances. And these kids are like 10 years old, 12 years old. They don't know what the cha-cha slide is, but it's just, it just feels so groovy and it feels like you can dance to it. So I think that's a big thing right now. No, definitely. Drewski, what about that, the dances? How yeah, important I, are those to the artists? I, I think, you know, you, you started to see some of the older artists try to take that approach where to make music that people could dance to. I feel like for some people, it didn't really work out that much because you still got dudes like Chuck that don't really want to dance and go crazy. You know, he just wants his two-step. So, you know, you still got to make music for people like us. Like, I'm not dancing in the middle of the dance floor no more. Like, I, I just don't got the moves. But this <laughs> the new kids, that's all they want to do. Like, they, they only come outside to have fun and to dance. They see it on social media. They want to duplicate it. They want to copy it. So I think having that balance in, in just music, still making records that you could bounce your head to, two-step to. But if you are 25 and under, you probably want to come out and dance. By the way, I do dance in my home. Cool. By <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at the Apple Watch. Oh, I gotta, I gotta get these, uh, you know, this exercise is. So I bust a move, but I'm not outside dancing. <laughs>